I can't get the right angle on this camera. I don't know. I have it on a boom arm. I'm still looking down. I got to figure this out. It does swivel in a lot of directions, but I can't quite get this going where I need it to be so that I'm looking more up at you. This is Studio Vlog 09, and today I'm going to go over my art table paper. The one that's there now, it needs to go. And I'm also going to share with you some ideas for some quick and easy sort of abstract Valentine's collage pieces. You can cut them up, you can send them out, or you can just do them in your journal. But it's more fun to share. I think it is. Yeah, I think it's more fun to share. Share with the ones that you love, right? So I'm going to share with you that. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. So let's go watch this. So here is my big map chest, flat files, whatever you want to call it. And it's sitting on a stand that has rollers. And I keep it covered with watercolor paper also. I'll show you what I mean by also. And it gets dirty. But, and it also gets filled up with stuff very quickly. But, you know, I try to keep things within reach, like, you know, maybe a little stash of stamps, an art journal that I'm working in, my iPad, computer, but it does fill up very quickly. So this is the paper that I use. It's um, Fabriano large sheets. They are 22 by 30 or 56 by 76 centimeters, 140 pounds, and it's a hot press. And what that means is it's smooth. The finish is very satin. It's so much better for stamps, and I just like it better. I love all watercolor paper, but um, I like the hot press. And Fabriano is a good brand and they do, they are animal friendly and that's important. So I buy a packet of four for about $20. So it's about $5 a sheet. And I don't mind because I don't mind spending the money on it because I put it on my desk and it holds up really well. Now I already have paper covering my desk. Like this paper here goes behind the wall and it is attached to a to the wall on a roll. And then I just put a piece of the watercolor paper on top and I taped it up with some washi tape and I just let it sit here for a long, long time. And I'm ready for it to go away. So I'm going to stamp on it some more. And here's the little owl stamp that I stamped. Let me show you. This little guy looked okay. This was my first one until I kept, this is how it looked. Pretty cute. It's okay, but I kept monkeying with it and I ended up removing its stomach. <laughs> it looked really weird, so I threw it away. And then I carved this one, which is so cute. And you can't see it very well. It's okay. I mean, you know, it was just her fun, right? All right, so I'm gonna just put some stamps down on here. I'm pretty happy with where the paint is. I don't wanna put too much more on here. And I'm so ready to get it off my desk. So I'm gonna just put some stamps down, do some exploring, see where this takes me, and we'll see what happens.
last forever Take me back to when we were kids And they didn't care if we were acting stupid Cause all we had was eyes If I close my eyes and think about us I can see the person I know I should be Cause honestly I don't have no time to waste I'm trying to come back to you Because now I see We were meant to be Where are you now? Or you live far away But just tell me where And I'll come see ya So here on the bottom right is where a lot of mess happens and some confusion and that's because I'm right-handed and I'm just always working things out here and it gets really muddied and sort of complicated so I think I'm just gonna stamp this stamp on top here with some green and kind of let everything sort of fall away I try to I'll keep my little owls they'll kind of be in there somewhere and I don't know these flowers they're just okay they're not not in love with them but I do like adding greenery a lot as you can tell And in some cases, more is better. Take me back to when we were kids and they didn't care if we were acting stupid because all we had was eyes. If I close my eyes and think about us, I can see the person I know I should be. Because honestly, I don't have my time to wait. Trying to come back to you because now I see we were meant to be. All right, so I've got these two extra leaf stamps that I'm gonna I'm gonna use along the bottom here. These I think I also carved during my rehab, my re recuperation period with my knee. So I probably didn't show these, but these are some new ones that I've been enjoying playing with. And I'm just gonna kind of fill in a little bit and then I'm done because I'm kind of over this. Not really, I don't know. I'm not loving this completely. So it's looking like I'm probably gonna be cutting it up. I try to fill in along the bottom because I know that there's been a lot of mess going on, which is normal because of where it's located. Um, I just add a few more here and switch to the other one. You know, purple leaves, of course, why not? I think I'll just kind of throw some in here. Don't have to have any particular reason or placement. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna be done with this. I'm ready to take it off of my desk, so it's done. So this washi tape is great because it just comes right off and it won't stick to, I say that, it might make a liar out of me now. I was going to say it won't stick to the watercolor paper, but it might. So just take it slow. I mean, all washi tapes are different unless you know a specific brand that you use.
So with this paper that's left on my desk, I'm gonna use that as my playground as I explore this abstract Valentine's um, quartet, I guess, because I'm gonna do four of them on one sheet. So right now I'm just sort of playing with different colors and trying to come, tr you know, now you can exactly see why it's a good thing to have the paper down because I'm very messy. But what I'm gonna do is work through the colors and then I'm gonna do some carefree painting on top of the taped off paper and that I am talking too much. So I have a tray of things that could work for a Valentine theme. I carved this one a few years ago from my husband and I, because we're always saying, you and me, baby. And I have a little box of hearts and some other things. So I'm going to try to play with these and see what I can come up with and uh, fill these up. But just the right amount. So this stamp that has all these flowers on inside the heart, it'd be really cute. And I think I would like to try it on here. But before I do, I'm not sure it's going to, I'm not sure if it's going to work. So this is where these little cards come in handy. These little note cards, you can kind of test things out. And I've got something on that stamp. But you can sort of test out designs and ideas and um, see how things are going to work with different inks and papers. So let me show you what's going on here. Oop. Sorry. So right here, you can see I have a little piece of something stuck to my stamp. And I've already got ink on it. And I'm having trouble getting it off. Um, so I'm gonna try to rub it gently. Yeah, I got it off. Okay. And then I just sort of clean off my kneaded eraser right here. Smush some of that onto my paper. Okay, so I'm gonna test stamp this, give it a test print on top of some busy painted paper and see if, it, if it'll work or if it will just be too much. work. It looks like it might be too much, but in this case, a little too much might work. Since this is going to be the panel that's all about hearts, I'll put it on that one. That works pretty good. 
So here I go, filling up my art table paper. Okay, so I've taken the tape off, and you have to be careful when you take that kind of tape off when you've been painting with designer's gouache. Or it will really flake up, so I had to do some cleaning up. Probably should have waited till everything was dry so I could kind of wipe it with my hand. But when you stamp with ink on top of gouache, sometimes it can take a little bit to dry. Um, and some of these are still, I don't know if you can see that, definitely here. You can see that it's still shiny. I would probably put a heat tool on this and kind of make sure that everything's cured before I move much further. So I'm gonna stop right now, get it dried, and then I'll cut it up into panels. All right, I hit this really hard with the heat tool. I made sure to dry it out really, really well. There is a trick to stamping on top of painted surfaces. And one of the reasons I like stamping on regular gouache, artist gouache, designer's gouache, as opposed to the other gouaches that are acry acrylic, um, is because that the sort of the buff texture of the surface of the paint, I don't even know if that's making any sense, the nature of the paint will absorb the ink better and hang on to it after it dries. If I'm stamping directly on acrylic paint, you gotta either hit it with a heat tool or use a solvent-based ink, such as 
such as stays on so that would dry on the spot but you got to just work with it and play with it and that's why I like I said I really dried this out really well and but before I go any further cutting it up I want to make sure that I don't have any wet spots any place that are gonna allow for me to smear it so I'm gonna take a blank piece of paper and just sort of put it on top and give it a good rub with my hands and see if anything gets picked up and then I'm gonna know that I'll have a wet spot somewhere. And I don't, tiny, tiny little bit, but I'm good. So I'm gonna cut this up. Okay, these turned out really, really nice. I'm very happy with them. Of course, I could add more to them. I could even probably put some metallic paint or metallic pen, some more Posca pen, some marks, but I'm really liking how it's just sort of, there is, <laughs> I was gonna say how simple it looks. It's not simple, but it's, it's. Um, I don't wanna overdo it. I want it to just be sort of nuanced with a little bit of Valentine influence, a little bit of abstract art, abstract collage style stamping. So I will mount them on some cards and send them off to my loved ones because I love them. So I'm getting ready to carve this stamp, which is a postage stamp. And I practiced on several different approaches. They're all basically the same, but then I decided I wanted to make it a postage stamp. So I transferred it or I built the more accurate design on some translucent grid paper. And I'm glad I did that because it kind of kept me within <laughs> within a, a bound a boundary um, and it turned out really well because I went to go transfer this on here and I was thinking oh let's see if I could just squeeze it right on here because I always try to get the most optimum yield from my rubber material especially if it's just gonna be a stamp and when I went to transfer it I thought oh my gosh this fits exactly like you can see the top here and the top here and I can transfer it right on this corner because this is a straight edge here and here and I'm gonna see if I can get that to work just right I think it will turn out because it will save me a few passes with the blades cuts with the blade so I need to get it just right and I can tell by the way it lines up. The grid on the paper really does help too. And so push that in a little bit here. Kind of wrap that around there. I think that's good enough. And so I'll tape it way over here. And I'm just gonna go for it. I think it will be okay. The measurements, the way it balances out. And if it's a little quirky or off, that's okay too. So I'm gonna burnish it with, I'll use this spoon. You can use a bone folder. And just make sure that it gets completely transferred. And that's not. And then of course you can go back over it Sometimes laying the spoon on the side works better. So what I'll do is I will go back over this and I'm likely gonna use a, so I'm gonna go back over this just to give me, I might need to bring that down a little bit here. I can see here that it's not completely lined up. So I'll just reinforce the design. And 
with a permanent pin and it will make more sense once I start carving it. I won't get lost. in the design or what's supposed to happen. But you know, again, it's still gonna have a carefree approach. I want it to have a looseness. I want it to have that hand-drawn feel. So if it does get a little wonky, that's okay. So I'm gonna cut it away from the big block before I start carving. Okay, so this is transferred enough. I don't need to reinforce any of the other parts of the design. I think it'll be fine. So I'm gonna use my little box that I always have as a riser, and I just keep this little card inside because when I carve, I can turn the stamp easier. It just works. And I like the height, so. So I'm gonna use two different blades. I have a number one V-shaped blade by Speedball and a number two. And you can see the difference in the sizes of their tips. I primarily use the number one, and but I'm feeling tempted to use the number two to kind of carve out some of the more profound areas, profound, more pronounced areas. So I'm gonna do the outline here and with the bigger blade, it really, you have to really commit. This comes to the place where you have to think about your positive and your neg negative space. And I went ahead and carved this out first just because I was anxious and I knew that I was gonna use this blade for that. But I also know that I'm gonna use the letters as positive space and the outline or the outer areas outside of the letters are gonna be negative space. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of that on the inside. But I think and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. I, normally I would use a thinner blade or the smaller blade, but I'm gonna try the thicker blade and see how that, how that works. I don't know. It's gonna be very chunky, I think, but it might go faster too. And I'm just gonna just go with it and see what happens. I like to clean the blade off. I don't like to get the shreds of the rubber materials caught up inside. I think it impedes being able to see and the movement. If 
I find that I like to use a exacto blade for getting large portions of negative space out at a time. It goes quicker like that. You just got to make sure that you're angled away from your carved solid piece, carved per, um, positive space positive space. Oops. Be careful you don't nick your design. Like I almost did. That won't all come out, so I'll break this up into smaller pieces. Some people can do this very neatly and get it all perfect inside. That's not me. leave that solid in the middle, that positive space in the middle for the first few test prints. But right now I'm going to remove these guys and I'm going to use the number two blade. And then we're going to see how this looks. This is going to be, oh gosh, this is going to be a hard one for me because I'm not, not used to using this big blade. Ooh, yeah, that, that I can tell I don't want to use the big blade. I'm going to take the easy way out. Actually, what I might try to do is, maybe I'll try this X-Acto blade and do it this way. That might be the real easy way out. I don't think I can get the angle that I want. No, I'm not good at using this blade. But that's okay if it's a little scratchy and uneven. This is going to look weird, but I'm going to keep doing it because I think I might like how weird it looks. So I can already tell that these are going to get really, are going to 
are going to come out very uneven, and I'm totally okay with that. So I'm ready to take a test print and I can already tell that it's going to need to be cleaned up. There's going to be some cleaning up to do, so that's okay. And I'll be able to decide if I want to keep that inside of that part too. I'm just going to, well, let's stamp it here. Actually, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so I'm pretty happy with it. Like I'm going to clean it up a little bit here and right here, the inside of the heart and right here at the bottom of the heart there. This is kind of scrubby here because of the way I stamped it, but I think it's turned out pretty good as far as the carving goes. And this E needs to be taken care of a little bit. And the L too. But I do like this casual feel of the way the carving turned out. So I'm um, pretty happy with it. Well, that's it for Studio Vlog 09. I am so glad you joined me here today. And I hope you keep coming back. I've got more videos coming. And I'm trying to do Two Minute Tuesdays. And I'm also trying to load in some shorts. Load in some shorts. That sounds really not pleasant. So let's start over again and say, I'm trying to film some shorts and load them onto YouTube. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I am so thankful that you stopped by and this is YouTube. You know what to do. You know how this works. And check out my shorts. I'm building that library. And check out my Two Minute Tuesday. I'm building that library too. Thanks again for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.